As much as consumer electronics like Apple and Microsoft like to complain when details of their devices are leaked before release, the fact is more and more these companies do less and less actual research. They rely on third parties for much of their core technologies and then market it and sell it to consumers. One of the most interesting is at Princeton School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, and we're going to take a look at a cutting-edge technology that could power just about any portable device. The research is based on a fascinating family of materials called piezoelectrics. These piezoelectrics take the mechanical energy that's exerted on nucleuses and actually turn it into a voltage that can move out from the center of the molecule. This creates an electric charge that can be harnessed from anything from pacemakers to electronic devices to major step forward once they harness the technology. The particular material they study here at Princeton is something called PZT, and we're going to watch how they transfer the so-called piezo qualities from PZT to a flexible material that can be, get this, implanted in the human body. It's pretty cool. Now, the core to understanding what's going on here is the amount of available energy that can be captured in just basic movements of the human body. You can get a watt or so out of your blood pressure, 60 watts out of arm motion, but the real killer power source here, the real sort of, you know, untapped resource, is the almost 70 watts that you get from each and every step as you walk. That's enough to power a light bulb. That's an enormous potential source of energy for portable devices. Now, the heart of the research, and this is what Professor McAlpine's group is concentrating on, is they've taken a piece of PZT and they figured out how to transfer the piezo qualities to a flexible piece of silicon or other substrates that can move and power other devices. And you physically press the piece of silicon onto the PZT and the piezo qualities are transferred to the silicon. It's that simple. And believe it or not, this simple piece of silicon is the finished chip. Its piezo qualities that can generate a voltage are transferred to the flexible material, but it's implantable in the human body. It's just like old-fashioned silly putty and the newspaper. The silicon actually captures the piezo qualities of the crystal and pulls it off to the silicon material. Just like what's happening in this image here, it's just like what's going on on the side of the silicon. Take a look at this. This is just a nanovolt. This is a tiny little fraction of a volt. But if there was enough flexing going on and a big enough chip, a unit like this could power an entire pacemaker. Imagine this material on the floor of a mall, capturing the energy of shoppers' footsteps. You could even go in the armband of the next generation of cell phones. For power-hungry devices with limited battery life, this is a tremendous innovation. And what's happening here is the flexing of the material causes a voltage that can power devices. And when mounted on the piezo rubber, they can be implanted in the human body and potentially used to power things like pacemakers. Now, a pacemaker is still going to need a, a separate battery. This is not going to create enough voltage to power the entire device, but it will significantly increase the length of time before the battery has to be changed, which avoids pricey and complex surgery. Now, are we going to see this in the next Apple iPhone? Obviously not. This is early stage research. The chips have to get larger. We have to really figure out how to safely get these units into the human body. But will you see concept like this in consumer electronics and healthcare devices in the next few years? Yes, you will. And it's not developed by companies by Apple. They work with partners like these. I'm Jonathan Bloom, CNN Money.